So you're thinking of getting a new soldering iron, but don't know which one to get. Gas or electric, cheap or expensive, thermostatically controlled or standard. Confusing, right? Well, today we're going to help you decide by comparing three different types of soldering iron. The German Weller 100 watt electric soldering iron, the Japanese temperature controlled electric soldering iron, and a low pressure gas soldering iron, just to see which one is going to be right for you. Hey, it's Derek here and welcome to my studio where we help you explore the wonderful world of stained glass with tutorials, artist interviews and inspirational videos. If you're new here, make sure to hit that like button and join the channel for lots more inspirational videos. And remember, everything we mention in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. Modern soldering irons come in a variety of flavors and prices. If you look on Amazon, you can find basic electric irons for simple soldering tasks from as little as 12 bucks. But I'd strongly suggest you stay away from those and look at irons made specifically for stained glass makers. These fall into three separate categories. Firstly, a fixed wattage, fixed temperature electric iron. Secondly, a variable wattage, variable temperature electric soldering iron. And thirdly, a variable temperature gas powered soldering iron. So which one is best for you? Let's have a look at the Weller to start with. A popular fixed temperature electric soldering iron, this German made Weller W101D is rated as a 100 watt iron, which means it has an operating temperature of 370 degrees centigrade and comes with a detachable 7 millimeter chisel tip as standard. Other tips are available, although the 7 millimeter is a very useful size for most glass related projects. The Weller 100 watt stained glass soldering iron has a built in thermostat, which helps to regulate the tip at a safe workable temperature so it doesn't melt the lead or copper foil you're working on and is a popular iron for professional artists and hobbyists alike. It is lightweight and performs well in most stained glass applications using lead or copper foil. It's well balanced in the hand and lightweight which is important for not creating fatigue in the wrist or arm over longer periods of working. The iron plugs straight into the mains and the lead is around 5 feet in length, which works reasonably well for most workbench applications, although you will probably need to use an extension lead to get access to your nearest wall socket. The benefits of this type of iron are mainly due to its ease of use, being light and quick to reach a working temperature. The tips are interchangeable, so it's quite straightforward to unscrew and change it to a larger or smaller tip if required. It's helpful to remember to unscrew your tip and reattach it from time to time, as this will help to prevent it from seizing up due to heat corrosion. This can happen with older irons, which have been used a lot, and it can be difficult or impossible to remove or change a tip once corrosion has set in. Cleaning the tip is very easy, and I would suggest that you invest in this type of cleaning set, which includes a metal sponge and tip tinner. Although you could also use a wet sponge to clean off excess solder as needed, this can sometimes reduce the temperature of your soldering iron, and you'll have to wait a little for it to heat up again. Remember to check out the links to these types of items in the description below. Looking after your soldering iron will help to prolong its life and keeping the soldering tip clean, bright and shining is the best way to prolong the life of your iron as it doesn't have to work extra hard to keep the right temperature. There are a few downsides to using this type of iron. The main one is the lack of control in changing the temperature of the iron, especially if you want to reduce the heat to prevent accidental burning or melting of the lead or copper foil you're working on. I've also found the handle of this iron can become too hot after a while, so much so that I've had to switch it off to let it cool down before continuing to use it. Also, having an electric cable running to the iron always presents the possibility of accidental damage to the wire due to poor cable management. 
and I'm always a little nervous about teaching new students how to use this type of iron as it's really easy to touch the cable with the hot tip by accident when working with the iron for the first few times. So just make sure you know where the cable will be resting as you stretch and move around your work area. It's very easy to be concentrating on the glass piece and not paying enough attention to where the cable is. The second type of iron we're looking at today is the Japanese Heiko FX601. The big difference with this iron is you can vary the temperature with a handy little button on the iron handle. This iron is electrically powered with a shorter four foot cable compared to the five foot Weller cable, but has a lower power consumption of only 47 watts and a setting temperature range between 240 and 540 degrees centigrade. It comes with a standard tip of 6.5 millimeter and a length of 210 millimeters and a weight of 68 grams. There are a variety of different tip sizes available for this iron, with examples shown here on their website, together with a very helpful list of troubleshooting guides which answer some of the frequently asked questions about this iron. I do like the attention to detail and additional product information offered to the customer by Heiko, which is in contrast to the poorer product information available on the Weller site. Maintaining the soldering tip on both types of electric soldering irons is very straightforward with the kit that is specified in the description below. The brass wool and the tipping tin really help to maintain those tips uh, and keep them in tip-top condition. The third type of iron we're going to test today is a gas-powered soldering iron, popular with a lot of larger studios in the UK and Europe. This particular iron is one I've been using in my studio for many years now, and although it's looking a little rusty, it continues to work really well. So the way we maintain a gas soldering iron is slightly different to an electric soldering iron in terms of the tip. Um, the heating element on a gas soldering iron is a copper rod and a flame plays across the copper rod and periodically it becomes pitted if you're soldering with it for a period of time and you have to file it back down to get a nice flat edge like this to the copper bit. It's then tinned and the way I tin it is to use an old paint lid tin, put a little bit of flux in there, a little bit of solder, and you can retin the copper end just like this to get a nice usable tip end. And that will work very, very well for many hours to come before you have to retin it. I use a low pressure gas cylinder to power the iron, which makes it very portable and it can be taken on site if needed. However, it's really important to make sure you have good fire safety protocols in place and have permission to use naked flame tools if you're taking the iron on site. Some studios use gas irons fitted to a natural mains gas supply rather than bottled gas. Either way, the iron works really well. Now the downside of using a naked flame iron is obvious. You have to be ever vigilant about fire safety and always make sure an iron is switched off at the supply when not in use. So what conclusions can we draw from the three types of soldering irons we're looking at today? Well, the Weller is a great all-rounder. It's lightweight, it's easy to keep clean whether you're using a wet sponge or whether you're using the brass wool. The tip lasts a good length of time and it is relatively easy to work with. I do find that it uh, the handle does get hot after a period of time and that is a problem if you're doing lots of work over the course of the day uh, and I'm a little bit worried about the longevity of an iron that gets that hot. It doesn't seem to be particularly well insulated. The little Heiko I found to be rather small. It's extremely lightweight and I think for delicate work like jewellery work etc it's extremely good but for larger scale projects especially a project the size like uh, of the size that we're looking at here a large church stained glass window the little Heiko iron really is a little too small. Also it was not maintaining its heat levels even although I was altering the pre uh, altering the temperature gauge I found especially these long seams this this joint here for example I really had to take two or three goes to get this little Heiko to melt the solder across a long joint like that in comparison with the 
uh, gas soldering iron, it really races through solder joints. As you can see here, it is not a problem to do long seams quickly. It's not, not a problem to do long joints really quickly with the uh, gas iron. So the gas iron really is my go-to iron if I want to do larger scale projects and do it quickly. The Temperature change is a little bit mechanical with uh, gas soldering iron and you know it, it's simply altering the amount of air that gets in but the solder joints are flat uh, and they are generally extre extremely neat and my personal preference is the gas soldering iron. However, if you are a hobbyist and you're working with jewellery or if you're working with terrariums or if you're working with copper foil, I think a smaller soldering iron like the Japanese Heiko one is absolutely ideal. So what are you going to go for? What's your decision? Let me know in the comments below what your personal preference is. If you found value in today's video, check out this one next. Leave comments and suggestions for future videos, join the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. With you, the sun is shining 24-7. Cause when we're together, it feels like we're in heaven.